Okay, so simply put, I figured I'd do something a little bit different today. And, I don't know, teach a class. How are you doing? I'm teaching a class, Jay. Go away. Um, this is about one of the few, the few classes or things that actually apply to you in real life. Calculus. I, I know, I know, it, it sounds hard, it sounds unbelievably difficult the first time you may hear about it. But the difference is, it's easier than you think it is. Well, I, it depends on who you are. Anyway, calculus is, simply put, the math of change. Which means, as long as... As long as you understand your slopes, areas, and stuff like that, then you are good when it comes to working a general calculus problem. Um, first things first, you just need to understand uh, where is the thing to draw a line. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. No, yeah. Draw a line. Damn it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll draw some simple lines. Just to get this grid started. Okay. So, a simple thing. A straight line. Doesn't go through the origin, obviously, but it's a good place to start. So, can anybody tell me what the slope of this line is? You can't? Whoa, what a surprise! Can you tell me why? It is because there aren't any kind of markings on this, on the axes. Because there aren't any points or markings on the axes, it is impossible for you to tell what the slope is of this line. And as a result, the main thing you're trying to find out is mx, yeah, mx plus b equals f of x. The main thing that you're trying to figure out is M. Do you want to figure out M? Yeah, that's kind of why you're here. And obviously, M equals dy dt, or no, dy dx. The change of change of y with respect to x, or the slope of this line. And how do you do it? How much does it rise versus how much does it run? That's the easiest description of m that I can give you. But how do you get that? Of course, the easiest way to do that is to see where the line goes. What type then? Versus how far does it go? And let's see, it, it maybe crosses at like one quarter or something on the x-axis. So as a result, it, it goes, it rises by 3 divided by a change in x of 2 and a quarter. So that means m equals what, like 
12 over 9 or uh, 4 divided by 3. That is your slope of this line, 4 thirds. I know it doesn't look like it, but blah blah blah. You get the idea. Uh, so, how do you go from here to more complex functions? That is entirely defined by this one right here. dy dx equals f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And you want to take the limit as h approaches zero of this massive thing. But of course, that again looks horribly terrifying. And it can be depending on what type of function you're dealing with. Now let's try something else, shall we? We already know that the other, we already know that this function defines just, just about all of your derivatives. And that's basically what m is. m is the derivative of this line or the slope of this line. Derivative equals slope. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put it right here. At any point x. equals m. And of course you've got to kind of question to yourself why do I need to know this? Because there's some things in here that are going to help you in in calc well well honestly let me think. The best the best use of calculus is in design, strangely enough. If you're trying to find out how to design something physical, something real, like maybe the the hover car or whatever. Whatever it is you're trying to make something tangible then you will need calculus in some way shape or form you will need to understand not just derivatives but also uh, you will also need to know integrals in one in one dimension and in multiple dimensions in rectangular cylindrical and spherical coordinates because you may not always be working with something that is, well, rectangular. You may be dealing with, you may be dealing with um, cylindrical coordinates as in uh, maybe a bar magnet or something. Or spherical coordinates in dealing with the changing point charges in electrical engineering. So again, those do play a role in the real world as much as it may not seem like it. But obviously I'm kind of drawing on my own preference in engineering. Okay, so 
let's come up with uh, where can I okay so let's start with something a little bit more oh I don't know complicated let's do do you want points again okay so we want X quit on doing that X We'll do x x squared plus four x plus three. Now you must be thinking to yourself and telling me that's some horribly messed up line. It may end up that curve is gonna look something like this somehow a across an axis across the origin or axis or whatever you want to call it and it's gonna do something like that obviously with better axes but I'm not I'm not the best artist I'm not gonna to pretend to be but this is something akin to that function And of course, you may be thinking to yourself, that is horribly complicated, and how can I find the function of, or slope of that? There is no one slope. That, my dear friends, is something I can help you with. Okay, so like I said, or actually, let's just go back. That slope at any point x its limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h approaches 0. So as a result let's try x plus h squared plus four, 4 times x plus h plus 3 minus f of x minus 4x minus 3 uh, all over h of course so that becomes x squared plus 2xh plus 4x plus 4h minus x squared minus 4x minus 3 h squared. Almost forgot that one. Got to expand across, you know. And then again, I'll divide it by h. So what do you get? The x squares cancel out. The four x's cancel out. And of course, the threes cancel out. So you're left with 2xh plus h squared plus 4h divided by h as h approaches 0. 
Okay. So you divide by h, and you, you're left with 2x plus h plus work, 4. And of course, you're doing this as the limit approaches as the limit of h approaches 0. So you're left with 2x plus 4. Limit as h approaches 0. And then do 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 do. So yeah. Mm. Where is it? Plus three. Okay. So, yeah, there's this function in a nutshell derived for you. And um, there is a nifty little rule for that, which I can actually jot down for you. f of x to... Where, where's the friggin' carrot on here? There it is. X to the value n a times x to the value n becomes n a x to the value n minus 1. dy dx of this function the derivative of this function ax to the n is n times times a may as well make it easier for you so you you don't like get confused or something this is Simply put, the power rule. And this is actually the one you're most likely to be using when it comes to, well, exponents or derivatives in general, is this function right in here. I'll even make it bigger for you so you can see. And this one, like I said, this one is the one you're most, most likely to see when you're deriving, well, anything. So, do have fun with that. Uh, I think I've let this video run on too long, so I'm going to call it quits here. And if you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm a horrible person for, well, I guess trying to help you. Ta-ta!